Hey everybody, welcome to Life is Brutal. I'm Anthony, and today we are going to be brewing another homebrew beer. And this is one I'm actually extremely excited about. We are going to be brewing a gluten-free honey blonde ale. So starting off, let's get into our ingredients. Now, we can't use traditional brewing ingredients like wheat or barley, since this is a gluten-free beer and those do contain gluten. So for this beer, we're going to have to use some alternative things to make up our mash to include different cereals and different grains. For this beer in particular, we're going to use about 5 pounds of amaranth, we're going to be use about 5 pounds of millet, as well as 2 pounds of flaked corn and 2 pounds of flaked oats, which I found out is surprisingly gluten-free. I didn't know that. Going into our more traditional brewing ingredients, I wanted to use a semi-neutral yeast, yet something that would still accentuate and enhance the flavors of this non-traditional grain and help elevate it to the point where we would still be able to get the expectations met out of a blonde ale. Additionally, we're going to be using about a half pound of this wild bioorganic honey. That's going to do several different things for us. One, it's going to provide that sweetened, heightened, more honey flavor that we're looking for in a honey blonde ale, but it's also going to help provide some much needed sugar that it will be able to firm out and increase our ABV because some of these non-traditional gluten-free grains don't provide the same level of fermentable sugars that you would find in your more traditional ingredients, making it very necessary. The last two ingredients we're going to be using are some Sazer hops to be able to provide a spicy yet kind of subdued hoppy flavor. And most importantly, we're going to be using some alpha amylase enzyme. This helps improve the sacrification of your mash, improving the starch to sugar conversion that we're looking for. And since I don't necessarily know how much we're actually going to be able to squeeze out of these gluten-free materials... I think that this is going to be absolutely critical, absolutely necessary to be able to get at least some type of ABV out of this beer. Getting into the prep process, the last thing we have to do before we are able to start brewing is we have to prep our grain. Now, if you just dump all these in and start mashing off immediately, you are not going to come away with the best tasting beer. It's going to be very uh, cereal milkish. It's going to be kind of like oatmeal water. So you want to be able to give them a little flavor, a little characteristic. So what we're going to do is we're going to take all of these gluten-free materials, we are going to place them on a baking tray, and we are going to bake them on a very, very low temperature for a mm, undetermined amount of time. I honestly can't give you the amount of time and the exact temperature because it's all kind of ballparkish. Just set it as low as your oven will go and set five-minute intervals and check on it here and there. What you're looking for is a nice golden toastiness to it and that's really going to enhance the flavor and get it more akin to your traditional brewing malts. Finally moving on to the actual brew day, we're going to start our mash in our all-in-one Klarsch Steiner system. It's very similar to your mash and boils and your grain fathers and everything like that except it's a bit more antiquated. It's a weird system that I'm going to have to talk about in a future video but uh, just understand it's an all-in-one. We're going to go ahead and dump all of our toasted gluten-free material into the mesh bag. We are also going to dump in all of our flaked ingredients, which hopefully will provide a nice silky, fuller body that we're looking for, as well as a couple extra points of AVB. And we are going to allow that to mash at 150 degrees Fahrenheit for about an hour and a half to ensure maximum sacrification possibility. Following the mash, I started pouring the wort into a little bit of a pitcher. That way I could kind of get a vibe of what it is we're working with here. And I was granted with some very sweet, very uh, Pilsner-ish type of wort. I was incredibly surprised and I was incredibly happy with the results already. It was not nearly as raw and unrefined as I was expecting and I think that had a lot to do with the baking process. But it was incredibly hazy, most likely coming from the flaked malt and what we ended up doing was a couple of manual fly sparging using that pitcher to recirculate it, hoping we could uh, accumulate some of those uh, hazier proteins back into the mash and hopefully clarify the product a little bit, but uh, I honestly don't think that was too successful. However, what I do think was rather successful, in a sense, was the actual sacrification of the mash. 
we did get some starch to sugar conversion, although it wasn't in the numbers I was looking for. In fact, it was incredibly low, coming in at around 7 to 8 bricks, which would have equated anywhere between 4.5 to 5 ABV. Now, this is incredibly low. However, I do think it is ballparkish for a blonde ale. Additionally, I know that we're going to be adding some honey later on, so hopefully it'll all even out to what we're expecting. With that being said, at the end of our mash, we were able to collect around five and a half to six gallons worth of this beautiful, golden, vibrant looking, hazy wort. Based off of its appearance already, I'm getting pretty excited. So once we got the rolling boil going, that was a tongue twister, we added the Sazer hops, one ounce at 60 minutes, and that's actually gonna be all the hops we add for this beer. I didn't want the hops to overpower this, and I really wanted the gluten-free grains to be the showcase of this beer. Once we hit flame out, we added the honey to make sure we didn't scorch the sugars and to make sure that we got as much of that delicious honey characteristic out of it as we could. We then transferred it into my stainless steel fermenter and pitched our yeast. All in all, fermentation lasted about two weeks and then we then transferred it into our keg, at which point I hit it with some pretty heavy carbonation, hoping to force carb it within 24 hours, but... Uh, unfortunately, I ended up with some not-so-positive results, and the head was just abysmal. It was all soapy and sudsy. It just wasn't very appealing. The problem was, I didn't know if I didn't give it enough time to carb, or maybe this was just a side effect of these gluten-free grains. I had never messed with them before, and I honestly didn't know what effect they were going to have on head retention. So feeling a bit dejected, I ended up throwing it back into the fermentation chamber for another couple of weeks, and whoa, it was just absolutely insane what the final product was when I tried it again. The body was beautiful and hazy and vibrant and golden, everything I was hoping it would be. We even got a nice, sudsy, foamy white head on top. It was absolutely gorgeous. As far as the other senses, I think it absolutely hit the mark just as I was hoping it would. I mean, I honestly couldn't really tell that it was any different than your normal, like, blonde ale. I mean, it was great. These gluten-free grains came through very similar to what you would expect out of a Pilsner malt or maybe a sweeter pale malt. And a lot of that probably had to do with the honey, but, I mean, it was so synergized. It was so similar. I mean, it, it, it was... Everything you could hope for if you had some type of disorder that would prevent you from drinking uh, traditional beers. I mean, this was a one-for-one -one replacement. I was so happy with it. So in conclusion, I learned so much from this process, and I was genuinely happy with the final product. I am incredibly encouraged to try to brew more gluten-free beers in the future. In fact, I am actually trying to work out a gluten-free porter in the future to really test my skills. If there are any gluten-free beers that you've worked with and you have any hints or tips, please send them my way because they're definitely needed. And if there's anything that you'd like to see me try to brew gluten-free, let me know. I will take on any test. So thank you very much for watching everybody. I really hope you enjoyed. I hope you learned something about gluten-free brewing. I know I did. This was incredibly eye-opening to say the least. So again, thank you very much for watching everybody. I really hope you enjoyed and uh, definitely give it a try for yourself. Like, comment, subscribe. Remember there's a story in every bottle and that life is brutal. Cheers.